Hi, it's Teresa from Dodge Nature Center, and time for another Nature to Go. Now, one of my favorite things to look for nature-wise in the night sky is the moon. I enjoy watching it change shape over the course of a month. And for the last couple of years, I've been taking a lot of pictures of the moon as it goes through its phases. And that's what I want to talk to you about this week, are the phases of the moon. What's happening to give us those different shapes? So we're going to use some really technical equipment here. Got a flashlight. I've got my little model of the Earth and my little fuzzy model of the moon. For this episode, the flashlight will play the part of the sun. And then we've got the Earth and we've got the moon. Now, the moon is orbiting the Earth. It's going around it in a circle. And at certain times, you've got the Earth, the moon, and the sun in direct alignment with each other, which means the moon is facing us and it's actually blocking the sun. And what we see is no face. This is a new moon. We don't see the moon because the part that's being lit is on the other side. We can't see it. The moon starts on its journey around the Earth. And after about seven days, it's gone about, about one fourth of the way around the circle. And this is where it can start to get a little confusing because this particular phase of the moon, we call first quarter. But when you're looking at it, you realize, well, no, half of it is lit and half of it is dark but the name doesn't reflect what shape it is. The name comes from where it is in its journey. Continuing around the circle in about seven more days, the moon is now directly on the opposite side of the earth and it's receiving the full glare of sunlight. And this is when we talk about a full moon. Now you might be going, okay, why isn't the earth blocking the moon, so why aren't we getting one of those eclipses? Well, that's because the moon isn't always traveling in a plane exactly where the shadow of the Earth is gonna block it out. Sometimes it's a little bit higher, sometimes it's a little bit lower, and so we are able to see the full shine of that full moon. People have used full moons for calendar development for thousands of years, and depending on what's going on in nature, around this time of year, the full moons often name what is happening. So it might be maple syrupy moon, or it might be worm moon because it's warmed up enough to where worms are visible, or it's bone breaking moon because it's so cold out. So the full moon. The journey around the earth is almost over. One more stop, and this would be third quarter moon. Again, it's not about the shape of the moon that you're seeing, but it's about where it is in its trip around the Earth. And at the end of about 28 days, the moon is back where it started and we have another new moon. If things line up perfectly, this would be when we would have a solar eclipse because the moon would be directly in front of the sun and looking at that from Earth, the sun would seem to disappear because of the moon blocking it. But like we said, the moon isn't in a flat plane. Sometimes it's higher, sometimes it's lower. And so we don't get a solar eclipse every month. We don't get a lunar eclipse every month. All right, so you understand four main phases of the moon. New moon, first quarter, full moon, third quarter. Of course, it's not as simple as that. There's phases in between as the moon is going from one of those phases to the next. After the new moon, the amount of moonlight is increasing, and so we call this a waxing moon. And at first, there's just a little bit. That's a crescent moon. Then we get to the first quarter. Then there's a lot of light, but it's not quite full. That's called a gibbous moon. We have a full moon, and then the amount of moonlight is going to be decreasing. And so now we have waning moons. First, there's a waning gibbous moon, where there's quite a bit of light yet. Then we get to third quarter, and then we're down to that tiny sliver of light. And so we're back to a crescent moon, but it's a crescent waning moon. And then we're back to a new moon. 
How do you tell if it's a waxing moon or a waning moon? Well, pay attention to what's on the right-hand side. If the lit part is on the right-hand side, it's waxing, it's heading towards full. If the dark part is on the right-hand side, that's a waning moon and it's going towards a new moon. The moon, our nearest neighbor in space, changing, but still the same. It's amazing and inspiring and something for you to search for the next time you're out in nature. Thanks for joining me for this episode of Nature To Go, and we'll talk to you again next time.